CEOs of government agencies partnering the project. Yes, some can climb up as well. And then after that, I would invite the CEOs of MTN or the Arep, Telecel, this, uh, C Squared, Estel, and the other private sector partners whose names I have not mentioned to join for the third and final photograph. That will be the third and final photograph. When we are done with that, we will all stand and have the national anthem before His Excellency will leave us to do the inspection. So this is the second uh, batch of photos. Thank you. Please take your seat. Final group, private sector agency CEOs partnering the project. So Patricia Telesel Estelle, Dr. Erica Bennett, please join us. Excellency, GIZ, UNESCO, UNESCO, please join us as well. So this includes development partners. This includes development partners. UNESCO and other MOBEX, the MOBEX team, please join us as well. Some of you can go up, some of you can go up. Alain and co from the MOBEX, which is happening in May, as a follow up here, please join us at the back for the final photo. When we are done, we would all go back to our seat and stand for the national anthem, after which the minister will escort the president to inspect the lessons going on. We'd like to thank all of you for attending upon this very important program. And you will hear more as the new faces are launched. So you may all, cameramen, you may all resume your seats. Mr. President, please go back to your seat. Thank you. So when we are done, sector minister and regional minister and ministers will accompany the president to the inspection. The program is not over. I want to invite us to stand for the national anthem. I want to invite us to stand for the national anthem. Please clear the exit. Thank you. standing director of Kofi Annan please join the minister to send the president to the the two lecture halls and the rest of us afterwards can also go and see what's happening thank you so much for joining us here we'll see you next time have a good afternoon This is a class um, for certified cyber security professional. Okay. And this class is aimed at people who want to take a career in cyber security, particularly people who want to manage um, cyber security centers. So the course will give them the skills to be able to monitor, detect, analyze, and be able to also 
fight cyber um, threats. Right. Yeah. So that is what we are doing now. And at the end of it, they are going to have international certification that is also recognized anywhere. Wonderful. And we believe that by giving them these skills, it will mark the journey and their journey to become cyber security experts. Okay. And we have several other modules that they can also continue to work on yeah. to become experts. Okay. So that is the work on. Like beginner, exactly. Beginner, exactly. Okay. 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 And it's, it's critical because we're signing tech diplomacy bilateral mm -hmm. with a lot of West African families, so Sierra Leone, Liberia. They, they are also beginning to digitize, but they don't have the skills Workforce and Ghana is seen as a gold standard. Mm. So, they're, they're, we're signing partnerships bilateral that will have us export some of our 1 million product graduates to go and oh, man their yeah. services there. Yeah. And then, as Ghanaian businesses also go in there, we're, because we're trying to take Ghanaian tech startups into those countries. Mm. So, when they go there, they would employ from this pool what will become expatriate workers mm. in the West African South region. So, a Ghanaian business goes to provide, for example, Ghana has just, in fact, the Minister for Sierra Leone reached out to me to find out if Ghana Link was and we gave a positive response to the issue very So they just won in Sierra Leone. And so the technical competence and skills will be taken will be Ghanaian to go and work in the So the one million coders were looking to export to the continent so that training is tailored towards the area of the we got another class outside there that will be So, those so things that are going through the same training, so yes. similar training, we've actually sent faculty from here, from the Center of Excellence, to all of those centers. And as we begin to scale up, we're going to be doing training of trainers, so that in all the regional capitals, we'll have skilled trainers over there, and they are training them in the same pool because, apart from exporting, a company, uh, uh, an institution like National Health Insurance is largely digital now, mm. and so they need data analysts to manage the data that they are collecting in every district. And so we need to create local competence so that you're not having all your skilled competence in Accra, mm. and then in the rural parts of our country you don't have the skills. So that's why we're decentralizing it. So they're having the same training, same equipment, same curriculum. Mm. So what is taught in Accra mm. is what is taught in Bolivar Boy. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and in addition, we are also giving 50% allocation to females. To females. Okay. We're yeah. doing a 50% so gender, yeah. gender yeah. balance. Yeah. And yes. those, we're, we've yeah. also started training yeah. persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So we have specialized training. There's a person with disability taking in part class. in this lab. Yeah. And we're also trying to tailor courses for people who are hard of hearing as well. So that persons with disability are also covered in the training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you. well done. You guys are on top of So then I told him we'll bring it up. Okay, I'll see you before you go. Thank you. So, where's the, the, the instructor? Is here? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, the instructor is at the head. All right. So, please. Good morning, class. 
So we are privileged to have His Excellency, the President, come through on day one of your training as part of the One Million Quotas program. Fred, I think you should just give the President a small brief of what's happening here. Okay. Thank you. So Your Excellency, once again, welcome. This is also another class um, that is aimed at people who want to take up network as a career. Okay. And it's called the Certified Network Support Technician. Mm. So um, as part of the, what we are going to deliver to these people, they are going to have skills to be able to um, configure network devices, troubleshoot network, and also provide customer support. Mm. So, so that, that is what we are doing here. Yeah. So, so this is, once again, another model and there are a number of models, but irrespective of whatever model you are studying, there is basic coding that you will study. Mm. So whether you are learning to be a data analyst or a cybersecurity professional network or a network specialist. specialist, you will do basic coding because the program is one million code. Mm -hmm. So irrespective of the discipline, you will do coding. And so we're, we're, we're confident that we would cross the one million. Mm. I'm happy the vice chancellor is here. Yesterday we met with all vice chancellors of public universities. Yeah and we're working with them to onboard the one million quotas mm -hmm. into their curriculum through GTEC. Yeah. And many of them are already doing things in that regard. And yeah. so we'll just upstream again, like the way they do com skills. Yeah. Every student, as a prerequisite for graduation, mm -hmm. will have to take one of the models yeah. to graduate. So, yeah, we are, we're fully on course. Mm -hmm. Well done, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank so, you. Thank you. There. So, you are still watching Wazel TV, and we are here at the launch of the One Million Coders program, duly launched today. And with me here is Dr. Tanko Computer. Hello, Dr. Tanko. Grateful. Grateful to be here. Great to have you here, too. So, the launch of the One Million Coders um, program by His Excellency John Dramali Mahama, what do you think of it, and how do you see it going to impact the youth of Ghana? Uh, well, this is an exciting time to be a Ghanaian youth. I've been for a very long time. We've not had this kind of initiative coming from His Excellency, the, the President. I mean, successive president has come and gone. This president is committed to empowering the youth of this country. I mean, he, we saw the, 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 the need to empower the youth digital skills. Make sure that we have the necessary way, way we tap in terms of digital technology so that we can take the future by the bull, bull by the horn. That is what the president is all about. And I'm so, I mean, this is an exciting time for Ghanaian youth. And you can see, they are so excited as of this evening, uh, last, uh, last night, we had almost 90,000 of them uh, hooking up to, uh, to our site. 
And that tells you that the enthusiasm is so high. Everybody wants to be part and parcel. They want to learn the same. They want to learn the discussion. And interestingly enough, we saw even chiefs, chiefs, or opinion leaders, taking part of this launch in the digital skills that they want to learn. So that tells you that it is not only for the youth, it's for every Ghanaian. And then I think we have to give thumbs up to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Indeed, we have to give thumbs up to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. And so moving on, what should the Ghanaian youth look out for when it comes to the One Million program? And what are some of the opportunities that if someone is there and has not registered for this program, what are the opportunities in there for him or she to get so that he or she can also get to register? One, one of the most important benefits that the youth are going to derive from this is to make them employable to the work of wealth. Look, now all the sectors, if you look at institutions, both private and public, if you don't have digital skills, it makes it difficult for them to, to employ. Because even when they employ, they need to train you in this area. But if you really have that skill, it makes it easier for you. Most of the government agencies will offload some of them to the government agency to help in the digital drive, uh, to make it faster. Because we want to transform our digital, digital economy faster. Uh, that is why GFEC is, for, is in the forefront in doing this kind of thing. Because if you look at our rural communities, most of them are uh, the network cut off. So GFEC will be in the forefront in trying to make sure that the network there is very vibrant so that this digital technology that we are bringing on board, all the rural communities can enjoy it. We are going to use our CIC, that is the community information centers. That is why. So it's going to the, the training is going to come to the doorstep of the of the people. It's not like the four centers are just for the launch. That is why we are doing. So initially people thought it was only the four centers that were going to be the train. No, it's just for the launch. But nationwide we are going to use every region will have a training center at least five CICs will be used for the training of, uh, of this uh, youth. That means that it's going to be at the doorstep. And so it's going to spread across the 16 regions and almost the 268 district assemblies. Every CIC is going to be renovated with state-of-the-art equipment. Another thing is that the, the minister was just talking to the president. Sierra Leone, Liberia, and then one of our, uh, in Gambia, are already interested in our products here. They want them to come and start that program for them because they, they, they've seen the change that we are doing in Ghana, they also want to go that path, but they don't have the capacity. So these are uh, trainees that we are training here. When they complete, most of them will be exported to go and be the starting point for those countries involved. And they are also going to be given international certificate. That means that they are not only, only going to be uh, uh, used in, in, in our economy here. They can also be employable in the Western world as well as the Eastern part because the international certificate that they are going to get can send them to anywhere, any part of the world to, to, to work. So it's an exciting moment to be Ghanaian at this time. It's an exciting moment today to be a Ghanaian youth. So thank you so much, Dr. I'm so thank you. I'm so <laughs> All right, and so that was a conversation with Dr. Tanko Computer of GFA. And as you've heard him say, he is solely in, uh, in favor of the launch of the One Million Coders program. And as the president said, it is the foundation for the economy of Ghana. I am Karen Korte reporting for Wiza TV. <laughs> Now, most of the standards by which these devices communicate uh, are